The latest health news blasting across mainstream media is claiming that organic food is actually no healthier than conventional food. Okay, well, that's completely ridiculous. And tonight our guest is going to talk with us about that. And in fact, he says it's being perpetuated by what he calls corporate science whores. Tonight we have Anthony Gucciardi. He's a GMO researcher and InfoWars contributor, and he's also the co-founder of Natural Society. Welcome, Anthony. <laughs> thanks a lot for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So where shall we start with this? Why don't we begin on why it's absolutely ridiculous to claim that organic food is not healthier than conventional food? Well, there's many facets to this, but to get started, we can look really at the study itself and how it contradicts itself. Because the study really is being shown as mainstream media as really the anti-organic study, and it shows that organic is so bad. But when you really look at the facts, actually the study itself shows that organic is healthier and has less pesticide residue, antibiotic-resistant bacteria. And then we can get into also how it doesn't look at key factors. It's completely funded by Monsanto-linked organizations and individuals. So, but first, it's important to understand the study actually says specifically that organic food has lower levels of pesticide, insecticide, and herbicide residue. In other words, it has less Roundup, it has, and it has different forms of it as well. They even fail to say that conventional food generally uses what's known as Roundup, and it's Monsanto's best-selling herbicide, and that has been linked to DNA damage, cancer, infertility, and so on. But then they say that it's okay because it doesn't reach the legal limit of pesticide, herbicide, insecticide use, which is said by the EPA and was absolutely ridiculous. It's kind of like when they say it's safe limits of fluoride or radiation or anything right, like right. that. You know, Fukushima, for example. Absolutely. So they're actually saying inside the study that, yeah, organic food has less pesticide levels, herbicides, etc., but it doesn't matter because it doesn't extend beyond the limit of EPA. So it's a blatant contradiction. And then it goes into the antibiotic uh, resistant bacteria, which I know you want to talk about as well. Right. And what really struck me about it was that this whole claim that came out is, oh, it's no, you know, it's no better than normal foods is just like Mike Taylor's excuse for not labeling GMOs in the first place by claiming that GMO foods, which are made in a lab, are no different than natural foods that grow out of the ground, so we don't have to label them, which is why even today they're not labeled, and we've got things like Prop 37 in California where people are fighting Monsanto corporate people trying to get this just labeled so people have a choice. Well, you notice this comes out right when the heated debate of Prop 37 is really sparking up right now. And uh, they don't even mention GMO foods. I know we're going to discuss that in depth, but they don't even talk about it. They don't even say, oh, and, you know, there's GMO foods and conventional. They just pretend they like to, to minify the argument here. Just like Michelle Obama's uh, food health, healthy food guide. It doesn't talk about GMOs or anything. Just right. came recently. But they don't even want to talk about GMOs. They want to pretend it doesn't exist so that people subconsciously, when they go to the supermarket, okay they see something that's conventional and that it might have a ton of gmos in it but they think you know i heard on the news that uh genetically modified food is the same as organic or whatever because they don't they don't consciously think about it they just say oh there was a study that said conventional is the same as organic so this must be the same but they don't look at any of the key factors and there's a bunch we can talk about you know gmos they don't look at they don't look at high fructose corn syrup which has mercury in it admitted by the washington post and anyone can google that of course they don't look at BPA content. They don't look at artificial sweeteners, a brand new study out. Just recently, aspartame destroys your immune system, uh, causes golf ball-sized tumors in rats, particularly females, uh, brain tumors. And they don't talk about any of that. They just say, oh, you know, it had less pesticides, less antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So the study really claim, uh, shows that organic food is better. But then we have ties to these statistical liars, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, corporate whores essentially that spin it using an algorithm we're going to talk about to basically make it look like organic food is worse. It's truly amazing. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to get into that because the people behind that you and Mike Adams did that article on that are behind the Stanford research that they put out, is it's such a joke. I can't wait to talk about that, but I just want to make sure we cover this because most of the time when people go into stores 
and they're looking at the food, and maybe you can tell me this. I know that I pick organic foods expressly because it's my only certainty that they're not GMO foods. And since more and more foods that are showing up in supermarkets are GMO foods and that they're not labeled, how much of a percentage do you think are actually GMOs? Of conventional? I mean, we of know. Of conventional, actually. yeah. The soybeans are upward of 96 to 99%. Uh, I know some people are saying it's 100% of all conventional soybeans now because of the contamination factor. Basically, when Monsanto goes ahead and gives you seeds and you plant them, they can go in the wind and uh, contaminate other farms. And then they basically sue you for having their patented genes inside your farm. And that's how they shut down small farming uh, institutions. But I mean, it's upwards of 96 to 99% soybeans. Uh, corn, we're looking at 93 to 96 cotton upwards of the same numbers it's all 90 plus percent uh, right. pretty much across the board with all the main crops and you look those are the crops by the way the government um, pays you to grow <laughs> so they're paying them to grow high fructose corn syrup basically through the corn genetic modified corn and then they throw it in these bats and make high fructose corn syrup which has mercury in it and it's genetically modified and then there's all these studies saying it causes obesity and cancer and people are like well, it's just corn. It's the same as sugar, but they have no idea what they're even talking about. Same with aspartame, made using genetically modified bacteria waste. Literal fecal matter of the bacteria is modified, and that's from 1999 article in the in Independent. It says we take the gene. This is like a Monsanto. I'm paraphrasing. I don't have it right in front of me. I just memorize these. And he he talks about taking the fecal matter gene and manipulating it to create aspartame, a really uh, delicious sweetener made from modified fecal matter. <laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to sell that one on the label, huh? Yeah, you don't see that on there. It's always like a, a pretty little pink package, like, put me in, it's all fine. And it also reminds me of those ads that they've been running a lot on TV, uh, trying to promote uh, fru uh, high uh, fructose corn syrup. Oh, oh, it's just sugar. It's just the natural sugar. Association. Yeah, right, yeah. right. And um, also, we were talking about that because of the cross uh, pollination going on, that so many of our natural crops are polluted with GMO, so they're not even pure now, and that a lot of countries won't even take our food because it does have GMO in it. So there's yeah. so many more foods that, that we don't even know or think of. I mean, obviously, soy and corn, they're high on the list, some wheat and things like that. But um, the pesticides, as you said, that's another thing. And the mercury. And now, what is it? You know, we always hear that mercury is horrible for our body. And what, what are some of the things that mercury can cause to happen in your body? Completely devastate your immune system, build up in your organs, build up in your brain. Uh, I mean, it's in thimerosal as well in the vaccinations. And just to jump back for two seconds about the contamination, about two months ago, three months ago, maybe on the uh, nightly news, I was on with Mike Adams and we broke that exclusive document that showed Monsanto actually planted genetically modified alfalfa before the USDA even approved it and nobody knew about it. That's from a whistleblower. And basically what's happening is the alfalfa was being found in organic seed bounties. So they'd have big, basically cans of organic seeds and they test it and they find genetically modified alfalfa. And they would report it to the USDA and the USDA did not even respond to them. So that's what's happening right now. Monsanto is literally trying to even modify the organic. Now, that's not to say that all organics modified is not, but they're trying and they're being stopped, fortunately. So it's always the best idea to buy organic. And that's why this study is so damaging because everyone's going to be buying GMOs now and just destroying their body. And like you said, it has mercury. And mercury is one of the most toxic element compounds that we're even aware of on the entire earth. Wow. Wow. And... Sending it to the USDA or the FDA and expecting them to actually be taking care of our health is such a joke, as we know, since Monsanto's ex-lawyer, Mike Taylor, went over to be the head of the FDA, and now Obama's made him our food czar, and he's just a total Monsanto GMO man. So who's looking after our food? Absolutely not the USDA. No wonder us. they didn't get back to you. That's right, us yeah. and, and wonderful people it, like you. Thank you. You too. But it, it probably wouldn't surprise you then to know that there's also a Monsanto board member uh, directly linked to the study funding the whole entire uh, operation wing of Stanford University as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, I wanted to get into that um, too because you also, I love this, you link this, uh, the same people that did this study to people that had worked with trying to make tobacco okay for instance one of the articles that were published and this is recently recently um, the case against tobacco is not closed 
why smoking may not be dangerous to your health. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, this, okay, this, now, now tell us how they're linked and what you and Mike Adams, who is also a contributor here at InfoWars, and um, he's with uh, Natural News, tell us about uh, what you discovered when you looked into this. Yeah, so me and Mike Adams were both really concerned about this study. And I had done some research, and Mike Adams, uh, it's on naturalnews.com as well. We went in, we researched this, took me, you know, literally about 12 hours of sitting down and researching the deep connections. And it's super complicated, and it's a pretty long article as well. I would encourage you to actually go read it. But um, to sum it up here, basically, the co author of the study, Dr. Ingram Olkin, okay, he uh, is at one point, or currently really the head chairman of Stanford's Department of Statistics, okay? And this is a guy who was funded by the Council of Tobacco Research, which was an organization that was trying to show that cigarette smoking was perfectly harmless. In fact, they were trying to show it had some benefits, actually, that uh, smoking, <laughs> you know, radioactive cigarettes with a bazillion fillers in it is actually perfectly safe for your health. And uh, an organization started this heart study, Okay, and they brought it to the court basically and said that cigarettes were bad for your heart. And uh, Ingram was uh, instrumental, it showed that cigarettes were bad for your heart and your whole entire body. So what he did was he made up this algorithm, a statistical algorithm. It's called uh, Multiverite Statistical Algorithm, known as Dr. Ingram Olkin's Multiverite Logistic Risk Function. I believe I'm saying that right. Um, anyway, so this algorithm essentially can be used to lie with statistics. That's a quote from a book here uh, written by one of the individuals who's very closely associated with it. The research ultimately became known as such and it was a key component in Big Tobacco's use of anti-science to attack whistleblowers and attempt to claim cigarettes were perfectly safe and even may have had some health benefits. And then, of course, this was all done at Stanford with Dr. Ingram here. The research originated at Stanford where Ingram headed the Department of Statistics and ultimately supported the science front to reject any notion that cigarettes might harm human health. Then, of course, he wrote um, this great article, or he was instrumental in it, The Case Against Tobacco is Not Closed, Why Smoking May Not Be Dangerous to Your Health. And then you can even look up Council of Tobacco Research, look it up on Wikipedia, and it plainly states that the Council of Tobacco Research, known as the CTR, has been known to pay off publications and journalists with more than $500,000, and after you adjust for inflation, that is $3 million today, uh, as far back as 1968, in order to generate pro-smoking propaganda. So this is a guy that has a history of joining up with corrupt organizations, massive multi-million billion dollar organizations, and lying using his personal algorithm to show that certain things aren't dangerous and to basically bring it back into the spotlight as uh, perfectly fine. So <laughs> if you can't draw the comparison between smoking, not smoking, you know, eating pesticides that lower your IQ with Roundup, DNA damage, et cetera, and GMOs and not, I mean, that's, it's, a, it's a clear indication. And Stanford's kept this guy on. He's, he's honored. He's the head of the department. He's, they're kept him on even though it's known that he got paid to do this. I, uh, this is so ridiculous to me. Like he just makes up some random science and then throws it out there, and it's like, oh, it's mathematically based, so it's all acceptable. And it reminds me of like when they were trying to promote tobacco, and they'd put all the movie stars with cigarettes and be like, oh, it's cool, it's so cool to be smoking cigarettes. Just like they trying to perpetuate with GMOs, like, oh, GMO foods will stop world hunger, or it'll stop starvation, or it'll help the uh, poor farmers. And it's all just a big lie. It's just a big lie to get us to buy these horrible products. And now he's backing up with this junk science. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the farmers or anything like that, I can't remember if it's a hundred or a thousand uh, every couple hours or so, but hundreds of, of thousands of farmers have actually committed suicide particularly in India, because Monsanto goes and sells them their GMO seeds, and they say you'll increase yields, you'll feed your family more efficiently, and they go ahead and the yields are actually reduced. And that's been confirmed in the largest study. Bill Gates went out and said that GMO is the only way to fight hunger. And I went ahead and wrote an article basically explaining all the studies that uh, by even the UN, actually the UN did the largest study and showed that GMOs cannot fight world hunger, period. There's, there's no exception. They cannot fight it. And they, they um, determined the only way would be sustainable and organic farming. The so, UN? The UN. That's, yeah, the UN, believe it or okay, not. Okay, that's really interesting. Okay, that's really interesting. I wouldn't have thought that would come out from them. I know. 
Mm. But uh, you have to also remember one important thing here. This isn't an accident by this guy. Uh, this is a literal way to lie with statistics. He's not accidentally, you know, messing with some numbers by accident. Oh, it's, it's just a funny study. It's not a fluke in the system. It's a way to lie with statistics. And this guy's like 80 or 90 years old. He's been doing this for a long time. And I think we need to look at all the research he's done, too. He's done probably hundreds or thousands of studies over the years. And they could all be very well paid off by organizations to reach a already predetermined conclusion. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We ought to find out exactly what he has done, um, su supposedly, research and the studies he's come up with. But just to uh, go back a little bit about the Indian farmers, because this really touches my heart, because it's just not India either, because Monsanto, as you mentioned, these, you know, GMO toxic mm -hmm. plants will fly into their yard and pollute all these natural plants and then Monsanto is suing them. Last I heard he had hundreds and thousands of our small farmers in litigation right now and they're, he's just thousand, yeah. taking away their farms, taking away their farms. And then in India, and it's very interesting because in India especially where they have a long-term history, longer than ours almost, of, of the seed being sacred where when a boy turns into a man they shower him with seeds when somebody dies they throw seeds on the grave and so the taking away of their seed collecting and forcing them to buy these gmo seeds was horrific enough but then as you said they weren't growing and now they're poor they can't feed their families they're no longer have a, a biodiverse crop they're only growing like cotton or coffee because they're trying to make money and then it doesn't grow and in fact uh, i did a story about this myself um it was so wonderful one of the uh, indian farmers actually when the monsanto rep came out he was screaming at him and saying look at this it's not growing you lied to us it's not growing better it's not growing at all and beat the monsanto rep up and uh, the agricultural head of india just kind of looked the other way because these people are devastated by these lies that Monsanto has perpetuated, and it's just horrible. I think it's just horrible. Oh, it is, and you have to look at the state of India. They just recently also took away a couple, few billion dollars worth of food that was intended through their farming program for the uh, poor villagers, like the dying, like they have nothing to eat. They eat, you know, 400 calories a day or something like that. They took billions of food, and, and the government said, we own it now, sorry. And you have to look at a, a country like that that's so corrupt and look who's devastating everything. It's Monsanto going in there, destroying small farmers, government owning everything. I believe there was one official who went out and spoke out against it. And they were saying that they're afraid for their life, you know, bad things are happening, et cetera, et cetera. But also you have to consider they're drinking the very same biopesticides that Monsanto has given them to kill themselves. That's really symbolic and depressing at the same time. Uh, they're drinking the same things that they were given to kill themselves. And it's because uh, Monsanto's GMO crops will cause super weeds, super mutated insects. Right. They'll just absolutely devastate your farmland and destroy your yields. And, the, uh, and also one important thing that we should probably talk about is the antibiotic resistant bacteria that it's causing and it could even kill the farmers themselves. Yeah, let's talk about that. And also the fact that the plants the way they stop, um, they have the Roundup already built into them. So when a bug bites the plant, it literally breaks open its stomach through the intestines. And now we're seeing, because it, it moves up the, the food chain, of course, right? It goes from the plants to the animals to us. And we're seeing this gut um, impermeability, I think is what they say. And all the things that that, that is um, linked to, and they're even saying possibly um, autism may be linked to this. So um, can you talk a little bit more about the kind of things that uh, we're seeing? Uh, you mentioned the white plague, this new resistance um, yeah. thing that's coming out, tuberculosis, I think you said. Can you go into Heavily that? Heavily resistant tuberculosis, yeah. But so the key here is that health starts in the gut. I mean, that's a pretty universally accepted fact right there. It starts in the gut to, to a pretty large extent. Um, we're, we've found now that mental illness is linked to gut health. So if you have an imbalance of bacteria in your gut, which is what GMO foods are really doing, they're going in and they're just essentially modifying your gut bacteria and system. So when you have too much bad bacteria, and that's bad bacteria from eating too much sugar or high fructose corn syrup or whatever, and it kills the probiotic bacteria, the good bacteria that you want in your stomach, and it overflows it with bad bacteria. And that's directly connected to your brain health. 
So you can actually be operating at a lower level than you should be if you have bad gut bacteria, and that's also uh, also uh, links into autism. But it also links into schizophrenia and everything like that. They're finding now that if you just start supplementing with probiotics and do a really enhanced diet, you'll see amazing amazing changes. And this all ties into the antibiotic resistant bacteria, because if you have a poor immune system, you're not going to be able to fight off an antibiotic resistant bug or strain. Right. And they're doing, they're just blasting it with antibiotics and these super drugs that have side effects as long as a phone book, and it's still not doing anything. And that's what I'm talking about, the white plague. It's this new uh, super, super, super an uh, antibiotic resistant tuberculosis that's killing a lot of wealthy individuals. And it's also killing out of poor individuals, and that's rare. Usually a plague will, you know, particularly kill poor individuals who are right. malnourished. But it's such the point now with 70-plus percent of antibiotics um, wow. estimated by some organizations used in livestock that basically livestock are so sick and they're eating these GMO foods and everything, the antibiotics are just getting so uh, – and, and, um, the bacterial strains are getting so mutated that antibiotics aren't working. And they're going and infecting people, and they're just getting more and more transformed. And over time, what could happen, a sort of a timeline, is essentially, you think about it, this white plague spreads, okay? Right. And it starts infecting the malnourished first, and it kills them with a super high fatality rate, maybe in a third world nation or something, because they don't have a strong bolstered immune system. Then it'll spread, and it'll ultimately go to the wealthy, the middle class, because they're eating these GMO foods, conventional foods with no real serious nutrients because they're destroyed or outweighed by the pesticide, herbicide, insecticide contamination. And your immune system is completely crushed, the bad bacteria eating a lot of processed sugars. It'll most likely have a higher fatality rate with them as well. It'll just climb the food chain, essentially, of humans and kill them off. To an extent, and I'm not saying this is absolutely going to happen, but this is really what would happen if uh, the white plague or whatever kept developing and got further out. But there is something you can do about it. Everyone should have some high quality oregano oil for number one to help fight it. Um, everyone should be having some colloidal silver, some low parts per million colloidal silver. If you just start bo bolstering your immune system, you can fight these things off without antibiotics to begin with because the antibiotics are worthless. It's now coming down to, and a lot of scientists are realizing this, we need to start using things like garlic to fight these off because it's actually working. And there's research by PubMed, peer-reviewed, that shows garlic can kill antibiotic-resistant bac uh, bacteria strains and viruses, whereas a lot of these antibiotics are doing vir virtually nothing. So when it comes down to it, they could also declare some type of pandemic or something like that and, you know, hype it all up and... and uh, probably even go as far as to say they're going to make a vaccine for it even though it's a bacteria so it could it could get it could get bad wow that so very interesting thank thank you so much for sharing this with us um in Jeffrey Smith's book, who uh, he wrote The Seeds of Deception also Genetic Roulette uh, he's one of the top experts on GMOs he was saying that one of the things that happens is that when the GMOs come in because they've been spliced with different species that never occur, like a spider and a goat, um, that it's actually created a mystery organism that does never existed on this planet, and we're putting it into our body, and they can't even classify it. It's not a bacteria. It's not. A, they don't even know what to. And they hence have no idea what it's going to do in our body, or our body has no idea how to deal with it. And so that seems to be also something that might contribute to some type of plague that. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We're just starting to see some of the effects. You, ha you. I mean, I, every almost every show I've been on talk about GMO. Someone calls in and says, "I'm a farmer, and I got brainwashed into feeding my livestock GMO crops, and they just start dropping dead." And you can look up Syngenta livestock dead GMO or something like that. Syngenta had these animals just dying on them, and they covered up for a long time. So the short-term effects we pretty much know about and it's it's hard because Monsanto doesn't let anyone research their crops and seeds I mean why would they right. so in a review of 18 studies it was found that there was severe organ damage associated with the uh, GMO crops uh, eating GMO foods but we don't know the long-term effects really I mean it hasn't been that long and all the scientists are saying that if anyone claims they know the long-term effects they're lying like point blank they're just making it up they have no idea and it, it's it's likely that even the uh, the elite don't even know what it's going to do. It's all it's all a huge experiment really. And because when you when you switch one gene, you don't know what it's going to switch. 
Right. They don't even know. They don't even know what's happening when we eat it, really. I mean, we have some idea. It's messing with our genetics. It's messing with our bacteria. It's affecting our brain. It's affecting our brain health. Uh, it's causing us to be fat. But we don't know really what it's going to do in 20 years. Absolutely. And it's yeah. not like, and as you said before, it's so corrupt. And the Monsanto, like, turning wheel of, you know, government and Monsanto and government Monsanto. So we really, we really just don't know what's going to happen. And you mess with the genes. I mean, it's going to affect your offspring as well. The genes are not something you really want to mess with at all. You don't want to mess with those because it'll, it can affect subsequent generations. Oh, absolutely. And that's another thing I was um, reading by Jeffrey Smith. And he was saying that because part of what they do with the pesticides is to weaken the plant, so that it'll die on its own is is that's why we're seeing these animals that are then getting you know they can't get nutrition into themselves and so they get weakened and then there there's a lot of infant deaths that they're saying now they don't do the studies here but overseas oh, yeah. they're definitely linking i mean what do they say if they put something yeah. by a chicken one of these things that they've isolated that if the chicken's pregnant it'll literally uh, abort the uh, fetus in 24 hours. And lab rats, what they lose, uh, the, all the mice die when they're fed GMOs. And, and now we're seeing over the last 10 years, the rate of infertility in, in humans has Time skyrocketed. Time magazine article today, is it the end of humankind or something something like that? You know, because everyone's going infertile and there, there's charts that show basically um, the infertility of men is just skyrocketing massively. And there's all these joking articles. Haha, is it the end of humans? You know, it, it's it's sick and disgusting. And they say it really playfully, too, by the way. It's like, oh, is it the end of humans? Is, you know, will uh, nature finally flourish and everything? They They really love it. But if you want to see a mainstream example of infant mortality in, in GMOs, look up Huffington Post infant mortality sterility GMO, and you'll likely find uh, the article or at least another mainstream one about how there's a study that showed that GMOs are linked to infant mortality and sterility, yet the USDA, FDA continues to do absolutely nothing. Oh, it's, it's just, to me, this single issue that we're talking about, our food source, it's, to me, the most important subject that's going on right now because the fact is we all need food every day to eat and to live. And if you corrupt the food source, if you take over the food source, which is exactly what Monsanto and other large companies, Sargenta, um, is trying to do, then the people become powerless. Yeah. And can I draw a parallel real quick? Please. We're talking about big tobacco. Now we're talking about big GMO. And guess what? The skeptics, the scientific skeptics, it's really fake baloney science. They would be saying that we're conspiracy theorists for saying that smoking is bad. You know that because the government and the corporations were funding it back in the day. And they would have the, they would have these science journals and they would say, oh, smoking and cigarette smoke is actually good for you. It'll help your heart. Right now, that's the same thing. You write an article about GMOs, you get blasted in the comments by these, these uh, probably paid off. I mean, these you know, quote unquote, science worshipers that talk about all oh, the scientific evidence is not there. Right. And it's all a joke, just like DDT, big tobacco. It's it's played over and over again. They used to say radiation was really good for you over and over again. We're seeing the same things now, the cell phone connection as well. But it's all it's all it's all really a game to these science uh, skeptics, as they'll call it. And they're probably just paid off. I really doubt they even believe it. I really doubt a lot of them will eat GMOs. In fact, I have a I have a personal example. I'm not going to give out a name, but I was on a program and he was blasting me. He was uh, uh, basically assaulting me for saying the GMOs were bad, et cetera. And after the show, he's like, oh, yeah, I eat all organic. You know, it's just it's just for the show. You know, you got to give people something. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I read an article somewhere that the Monsanto employees won't even eat the GMO foods. No, but and then they have Argentine and slave labor where they can only buy from the Monsanto store with their money, and if they leave, they don't get paid. This is not a corporation that cares. And as Alex always talks about, we're talking about a government that uh, did radiation studies of tens of thousands of babies and basically killed them off. So why is it any different um, for the general public to be eating GMOs? It's not someone. It's not an organization that cares about you, period. Well, yeah, and Monsanto also made Agent Orange that we sprayed all our troops with. So Hundreds of thousands of deaths and birth defects. 
Right, and I, I don't think a lot of people realize that Monsanto was in the poison business, Roundup and Agent Orange, DDT, before he decided to get into the seed business. And how you marry poison and seeds, it... Well, they're bringing back Agent Orange, too, in the crops as a form of a um, new GMO crop. They're going to use uh, an Agent Orange compound in, in it. Okay, okay, so then... Anthony, what can we do about this? I, I don't want to just talk about what's going on and how horrible it is without giving people some, some solutions, some actions to take. And I know you have some recommendations. What can you tell people? Yep. Well, me and Mike Adams and Natural News just started this petition um, on change.org. And I think it's really essential that we get 10,000 signatures at least on this. It's, we already have 3,000 or something. We didn't ever really promote it that hard because a lot of people are passionate about this. And I would recommend everyone to go sign it. Uh, the, the really simple way to find it is either go to my site or um, Natural News, either one. But you, the real, other way is uh, tinyurl.com slash organic petition. And that's tinyurl. It's just a short link version slash organic petition. Okay. And uh, we don't make any money from this. We don't collect emails. It's change.org. They basically do everything. And we're having it so that as soon as you sign your name on this petition, it sends an email to Stanford. And it says basically that you better retract that study and you better investigate Infer in Ingram or whatever his name is, the uh, Big Tobacco linked co-author, because this is, we're not going to stand for it. And, and if we just sit here and let them pump these studies out, we're not going to win anything. Um, they're just going to do these studies all day long. We need to show and call out the media. And that's really what this, this is as well. We're calling out the media on this. Are you really going to continue to report this garbage from this statistical liar, admitted statistical liar who worked for a corporation that paid off journalists and organizations upwards of $3 million after adjusting for inflation to report bogus fake information to encourage people to kill themselves from smoking cigarettes? It's the same thing here, and we're calling for retraction and the mainstream media to acknowledge it and cover it because it's, it, we need to stop it here. If this organic study gets through and people start uh, buying conventional and believing it and the, and, and the mainstream media who's calling organic uh, consumers nothing short of cult members and delusional in the New York, New York Times, it's, it's just going to get worse. So we need to stop it here. If we stop this study and basically show the world what the truth is about it, it can, it can end from there. We can go from there. Uh, we're also Prop 37. If you can support Prop 37 in any way you can, that will also be instrumental in making sure we label GMOs in California. Right. And then that will extend throughout the next rest of the country and potentially the world. But the rest of the world, by the way, is already pretty keen to this. I mean, there's multiple countries with labeling and even downright bans on GMOs. The right. uh, United States, of course, is just heavily infiltrated by Monsanto goons in virtually every single department of government. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for this very illuminating information and for all that you're doing um, to spearhead the stopping of this and saving our food. Thank you so very much. And we'll make sure we get that link up on InfoWars, too, so people can get to it quicker and we can get those numbers that you want. Thank you very, very much. Thanks a lot for having me. So that was Anthony Gucciardi, and his uh, website is Natural Society. Go sign that petition. We really have to stand up together and make a difference, just not complain about the stuff. It's our food. It's our children. It's our world. We can make a difference. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.